when you want to create a dynamic report from multiple sources and you need an approximate match. If the VLOOKUP function cannot get the job done, then Power Query will come for rescue. I am Nabil Murad. In this tutorial, I create a dynamic employee's benefits report comparing between the VLOOKUP function and Power Query. So let's dive in. Here is my start file. You can download the exercise file and follow along by clicking on the link below this video. In this worksheet, I have three lists. The first list is for employee information. It shows an employee number, a first name, a last name, a phone number, an email, a department, and salary. The second one is for the hire date. It shows the employee number and the hire date of the employee. And the third one is a benefits table and it showed the benefits each employee can get based upon how many years at company. So we have different benefit packages. If the employee worked less than two years, then there is no benefit between two and five, the basic package, between five and 10, the bronze package, between 10 and 15, the silver one, between 15 and 20, the gold package, above 20, the platinum package. What I would like to do is to create a dynamic report that shows the first name of the employee sorted alphabetically, the last name, the department, how many years the employee worked at company, and the package of benefit the employee will be getting. I could do that by using functions and multiple helper columns, but when I create the final report the way I want it to look like, the report won't be dynamic. If you want your final report to be dynamic, then you have to create it by using Power Query. Let me show you first how I create it by using functions. I'm going to use the middle list, the hire date list, and I'll be writing a label, years at company, and I hit enter, and I'll be calculating how many years each one of the employees worked for the company by using a date diff function, equal date diff. I open bracket. The date diff function is not supported by a screen tip, but it requests the start date, which is the higher date. So I click on the start date in cell K2. I type a comma, and then it requires an end date, which is today's date. So I'll be using today function. Today, open bracket, closing bracket, and then comma, the last argument. How would you like to express the difference? Would you like it in years, in months, in days? I want it in years, so in double quotes, I'll be typing Y. I close the bracket, and then I hit enter, and the first employee spent three years at company, I can double click and send it down. Next, I want to extract the package of benefit that the employee will be getting. So I'll be writing here a label benefit. I hit enter and I'll be using a VLOOKUP function with an approximate match. So I type equal VLOOKUP and then I hit tab. What's your lookup value? My lookup value will be the years at company that I just extracted. I type a comma. And I would like to select all this list, and I named it, but I don't remember the name, then I'm going to hit the F3 key, and the name of the list is package. I hit OK, and then I type comma. I need a value from the package column, which is the second column. I type 2, then I hit comma. This is an approximate match. Approximate means true. Instead of true, I'll be typing 1. I close the bracket and then I hit enter and the first employee will be getting the basic package. I double click and send it down. Now that I extracted these two pieces of information and because I want my report to look exactly like this, then I need to do a few things. I need to copy the first name and last name in columns B and C, shift control down arrow and I copy control C. I'll be pasting somewhere in column Q, control V. Then I want to copy the department. I select the department, shift control down arrow, control C, and I'll be pasting the department, control V. Then I want to bring the two columns that I calculated. Note that the order of the employee is different because the original order of employee was sorted ascendingly from employee one to the last employee. Then before copying these two columns, I need to sort this column. 
So I go to the data tab of the ribbon and then I click on sort ascending. Now I can copy these two columns as well. Shift control down arrow and then control C to copy. I go to the right side of the department and then I want to paste values. To paste values, I click on the home tab, click on the down arrow for paste and I select the leftmost command in the third row or I can use the shortcut Alt ESV and then I hit enter and I would have pasted values. I copy the formatting from the department by using the format painter and I want to sort the first name card. If more records are added, then I have to repeat the final part of building the report because I'm just pasting values. And the final thing, because my report should show the first name in an ascending order, then I'll be selecting a value in the first name. I go to the data tab and then I sort it ascending. And this is how my final report should look like. Is this report dynamic? No, it isn't, because if I add more records to the source data and because I copied and pasted values, then this report is not dynamic and it needs to be recreated every time. If you want your report to be dynamic, then your best option is to use Power Query. But the question is, do we have an approximate match like the VLOOKUP with an approximate match in Power Query? Let's see how we do that. In my next worksheet, I have the same exact data and I converted each one of the three lists into a table and I named each table. So the first one is named employees table. The second one is named hire date and the last one is named benefits. I'm going to send the three tables to Power Query and save them as a connection only. To do that, I start with the first table, the employees table. I go to the data tab of the ribbon. I click on from table range. My query editor opens. I want to close and load, close and load too. I'm going to load it as a connection only. Only create a connection. I hit OK. I want to send the second one as well. I can use the shortcut Alt APT. I save it as a connection only, close and load too. And I'll be saving it only create a connection. And I'll do the same for the benefits table. Now I have the three tables in the query editor as a connection only. And I will start calculating the years at company by editing the higher date query. I double click on it to open it in the query editor. And in the query editor, here is the higher date. I want to calculate how many years each employee has been working for the company. So I go to the transform tab of the ribbon and under date, I select age. It returns the age in years, in months, in days, in hours, in minutes, in seconds. I just want the total in years. Then I click under duration and I select total years. I have lots of decimals. Then I want to round down each one of the numbers exactly like the VLOOKUP function with an approximate match. So I click on the down arrow for rounding and I select round down. And here are the number of years each employee has been working for the company. Then I'm going to change the label work years. My next step will be creating a new query by merging this field to the employee's query. So I click on the Queries tab to expand it. Right now I have three queries and I'll be creating a new merge query. So I go to the Home tab and to the right side of the Home tab, I click on the down arrow for Merge Queries and from the list I select Merge Queries as new. In the Merge dialog box, I have the higher date selected. I want to bring the employees. That will be my main table. And for the second table, I want the higher date. It asks me what's the matching field. Well, the matching field between the two tables is the employee number. So I select the employee number from the employees table and I select the employee number from the higher date. The most important step here, because we'll be building a simulation of the VLOOKUP function with an approximate match, is to keep all the records from each one of the tables. Then for the join type, I'll be selecting full outer join. When I hit OK, I can see all the fields from the employees table and for the higher date, I get this column which shows table for each row. I have a double side pointing arrow. So if I click on it, I can expand and select which fields to bring from the higher date. Actually, I just want the word years. So I'm going to uncheck the employee number and I'll be unchecking use original column name as prefix and I hit OK. 
Now I have the word years, which is the column we calculated in the higher date query. Let me change the name of this query and I'm going to name it benefits report. And my next step will be merging the benefits table to this query. So on the home tab, I click on the down arrow for merge queries and I want to select merge queries. So I'll be merging fields from the benefits table to this query benefits report. When I click on Merge Query, the Merge dialog box opens. I want to bring the Benefits table, so I click on the down arrow and select Benefits. What's the matching field between the two? From the Benefits report, I select the word Years, and from the Benefits query, I'm selecting the Years at Company, and like what I did before, I want all the records from each one of the two tables, then I select a full outer join. I hit OK. As expected, I get a column that shows table. I click on the double side pointing arrow to specify what I want to bring. So when I click on the double side pointing arrow, I want the years at company and I want the type of benefits package. I don't want the description of the package, which is benefits. So I take the check away from benefits and then I hit OK. Worked years, this is the calculated column that shows how many years each employee has been working for the company. Years at company, that's the one coming from the benefits table. And it just lists the brackets that are available in the left column of the benefits table. Then I have five, I have two, I have 20. And because I don't have an employee who worked for the company for zero years, then for the worked years, I get a null, and here I get a zero. I don't have an employee who worked exactly 10 years, then I get a null and I have 10 and the same for the 15 years. That's fine. My next step will be creating a conditional column. This conditional column will pick up the number from the word years. But in case I have a null, it will pick up the number from the years at company. Let's create a conditional column. I go to the Add Column tab of the ribbon. I click on Conditional Column. I will give it a name, Total Years. And I say, if the word years equals null, then in this case, give me a value from a column. So I click on the down arrow of the output, select a column, and from which column you want to return value, then I want to return value from the Years at Company. I select Years at Company. Otherwise, what if it's not null? If it's not null, then give me the same value in the word years. In the else portion, I select a column and I say I want the value from the word years. I hit OK and the new column is created. I don't need any more the word years and the years at company. Then I select both columns by pressing Shift and I remove these columns, right click and remove columns. My next step will be sorting the total years. So I click on the down arrow for the total years and I want to sort it ascendingly. After sorting it ascendingly, I can see the name of the package. So if I have zero, then we get none, no benefits for someone who didn't work or worked less than two years. Starting from two years up to not including five years, the employee gets the basic package. Starting from five years up to not including 10 years, the employee gets the bronze package. And from 10 to 15, not including the 15, the employee will be getting the silver and the same applies to the gold and platinum. Then I select the package column and I want to fill down, replacing the nulls with the name of the package. To do that, I go to the Transform tab, and on the Transform tab, I click on the down arrow for Fill, and I select Fill Down. Now I have the package and the total years. But for the other columns coming from the employees table, we have some nulls, because we didn't have an employee working zero years, or an employee working exactly 10 years, or an employee working 15 years. Then I want to get rid of these nulls, and I'll be filtering any one of the columns having the nulls. Let's say the first name, I click on the down arrow, and I take the check away from null, I hit OK, 
and I get a clean list of employee names. I want to sort them by first name. I click on the down arrow one more time, and then I sort ascendingly. Now I just want to keep the column that will appear in my final report, and I'm going to select them in the same order. I want them to appear in the report. So I select the first name, press Ctrl and click on the last name, press Ctrl and click on the department, press Ctrl and click on the total years, then press Ctrl and click on package by selecting them in this order. And then I right click and say, remove other columns. I will be rearranging the columns the way I want. The final thing I want to do is to rename the total years. I hit F2 to rename it, and I name it here Z Company, YAC, and then I hit Enter, and I finish creating my report. I want to send it back to Excel. So I go to the Home tab, click on the down arrow for Close and Load, and select Close and Load 2. And I want to dump it in a new worksheet. Then I hit OK. And here is my final report exactly as I wished. If more records are added to the source data, all what I need to do is to refresh my query and I'll get the updated version of my report. If you found value in this tutorial, give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to my channel and ring the bell to be notified when your tutorials are released. The best is yet to come. Thanks for watching and see you next time.